Nigeria's main opposition People's Democratic Party, the PDP, has expressed disappointment in Thursday's Supreme Court judgment affirming the election of President Bola Tinubu in the February polls. In a statement sent to VOA, the PDP said the ruling was a sad commentary for Nigerian democracy. Atiku Abubakar and Peter Obe of the Labour Party had challenged Tinubu's victory. President Tinubu has called on Abubakar and Obi to collaborate with him in building Nigeria. Yunusa Tanko is the Labour Party spokesperson. He tells me that the court decision destroyed the remaining trust that Nigerians had in their judiciary. The Nigerian people were expecting to see a different Supreme Court judgment coming from the fact that uh, there are fresh evidence to indicate that uh, the president elect in court he submitted a forged document in which the Supreme Court just threw it out with a wave of a hand, considering the fact that there was similar adjudication being done in Britain just recently in favor of Nigeria, where there were so much issue of technicalities wrong with it. But the judge, in his dry thinking, thought that they have better decision to make in the substance of the matter and still advocate in favor of Nigeria, talking about the PIB bill dragged on in, in Britain. Now, our own court decide to make technicality more supreme than the substance of the matter. So we are now held down with the position of a president that in which people in their heart are still doubting his legitimacy and his actually true identity. But President Tinubu himself has responded uh, following the ruling, calling for a time now to come together and build Nigeria. Yes, he called for that, but it can only be done when you talk about a government that already had defeated the opposition under a clean or challenged position as regard to the processes of the election. But in this case, what we are talking about had to do with the identity of the president and which all of us have been challenged. There is no apology whatsoever to that particular issue being put by Bolatinumbu. Neither has he cleared the ear as to to his true identity. Until those facts have been established, that is when political parties and all other people like me will ever consider probably working in that government, even though I'm not expecting any invitation. But at the same time, we will work on the opposition to continue to criticize some of the policies and the actions of this particular government in adding value to the system. Because actually, um, opposition is part of government. Whether in or out, you can make your own contributions to the development of, uh, of a country. Yunusa Tanko is the spokesperson for the Labour Party of Nigeria. He was speaking with me from the capital, Abuja. A spokesperson for World Food Programme, the WFP, says the group is suspending part of its assistance in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, not just because of the recent uptick in fighting, but also because of a lack of funding. Shasta Mongorabi says from January to August, the WFP assisted 2.8 million people in Eastern DRC. She tells me that the agency urgently needs $629.7 million dollars for now till February 2024 to continue its emergency assistance. We were forced to uh, cut assistance to about 3.6 million people in need in Eastern DRC because we do not have enough funds to sustain our operations. And this comes after months and months of warning that this day will come if we do not receive the resources that we need to support and reach those who need our support. Is it because of lack of resources or because of the fighting that is taking place there? The fighting and the conflict that's been intensifying is obviously driving hunger rates really high in the DRC. The reason why we were forced to make these cuts is because we do not have the financial resources. We're 100% dependent on voluntary funds. So we advocate to raise funds for the operations to sustain them. And unfortunately, this year, in the DRC and elsewhere, in a lot of uh, operations, we were put in a very difficult situation where we had to cut simply because we didn't have enough financial resources to continue our operations.
When you talk about lack of resources, how much does WFP need to carry on your work? We need about $876 million for our response in DRC. And what we have currently is less than 22% of that required amount. So the funding gap is at around $688 million. There are many displaced people in the Eastern Congo. What can you tell us about the type of work you are doing there? I mean, we're providing assistance and, of course, focusing on the most vulnerable. And that usually includes uh, the displaced, the women, the children. And what's really unfortunate is DRC is a country that which is an abundance of resources. The fact that there is the conflict, which has been intensifying disease, displacement, poor infrastructure. This has forced more than 25 million into crisis or emergency levels of hunger. This is why we are in the situation that we are today. Needs are growing. And at the same time, the financial resources are dwindling. Shaza, funding is very crucial too, but there are some people who are saying, why can't the WFP stay because the people there need you most? We are adamant and staying and delivering, and we are continuing to appeal for continuous funds. If we don't have the financial resources, unfortunately, as in other cases in other country contexts, we are forced to make painful decisions. And we cannot continue our operations if we don't have the funds to sustain them. And that doesn't mean that, you know, the vulnerability or the food security situation is better. No, absolutely not. We're very aware of the needs and we are adamant to stay. Shasa, thank you so much again. A pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much. The East African Community Regional Forces on Wednesday blamed a breach of ceasefire between Congolese and armed groups for the death of a Kenyan peacekeeper a day earlier. The regional mission to which Kenya contributes troops confirmed a Kenyan soldier had died in a motor fire following a clash between Congolese armed forces and the M23 rebel group. But rather than take the line of Kinshasa, which blamed the M23, the East African Community Regional Forces blamed both sides for violating a ceasefire agreed on months ago. The ceasefire agreement between the armed forces of the Democratic Republic of Congo, FRDC, and the M23 armed group was bleached. The mission said in a statement, in a statement on Wednesday referring to the October 24th incident. The hostile clashes fatally wounded a Kenyan peacekeeper stationed at Kanyamaholo near Chibumba, 15 kilometers northeast of Goma. Consequently, investigations under which this incident occurred have commenced. A DRC army spokesman has since blamed the M23 rebel group for the attack on East African Community Regional Forces. Lieutenant Kano Kaiko Ndijike, the spokesman for the Congolese army in North Kivu, said that the M23 attacked with a mortar fire that led to the death of Tuesday of peacekeeper from the East African Community Regional Forces. After facing the determination of the East of the FRDC, Congolese Army, on the morning of Tuesday, when they attacked one of our positions, the M23 supported by the Rwandan Army, directed their motor fire at the advanced positions of the East African Community Regional Force with the aim of accusing the FRDC of being the perpetrators of the said fire and thus attracting the good graces and sympathy of the regional force, obviously creating a misunderstanding between the latter and the royal force of the DRC and Congolese army said in a statement. The Congolese army said in a statement on Tuesday. The violence means both conditions in the ceasefire and the what is known as the Luanda process have been violated. The East African Community Regional Forces calls for the return to ceasefire agreement and the cessation of hostilities between the armed forces of the Democratic Republic of Congo and the M23 armed group. The M23 did not immediately react to the accusation. 
the ESCRF, which deployed last year in November and has often refused to engage in direct combat with rebel groups in eastern DRC, choosing instead to work as a buffer for civilian areas. However, the attack the second in the week on East African Community Regional Forces could signal direct threats to the East African Community Regional Force positions currently divided among troop contributors, Kenya, Uganda, South Sudan and Burundi.